There's 27 of them. They are incredibly useful and surprisingly simple to use, yet most people overlook and underestimate the power of these amazing Blender features. Constraints. Now this is the copy location constraint. It's one of the more basic ones and it does exactly what you expect it to do. It copies the location of any object in your scene and moves the constrained object to that location. But what exactly are constraints? Basically, they are ways to control the properties of objects in your scenes, usually related to other objects. You could call them object relationships. And they come in four categories. Motion tracking, transform, tracking and relationship. In this video specifically, we'll dive into the transform constraints. So let's get back into that copy location constraint. Like I said, in essence, it just copies the location of any object in your scene, but it can actually do a lot more. In this example, the cube has a simple lateral movement as well as going slightly up. So let's take the monkey and add a copy location constraint, which we can do over in the constraint tab, which is over here. I'll set the cube as the target and immediately the monkey is moved to the same location as the cube, respecting its animation as well. Well, so far, no surprises here. It just does exactly as you expect from it. Now for the other options, the first being the vertex group. I'm not going to go into uh, detail on this, but some transform constraints have this option. It's mostly used for advanced rigging and constraint options in, for example, character animation. And therefore, I'm not going to touch it in this introductory video on constraints. Next, we have axes another option most constraints have. This will let you limit the effect of the constraint on a certain axis. If we, for example, disable the X and Y, we now only copy the Z location or the vertical movement of the cube. So you will now see our monkey is just moving up and down, only copying the Z movement of this cube. Then we have invert, which just inverts any movement on any enabled axis. And if I, for example, only enable the X axis, you will see it basically mirrors the cubes movement. So the invert toggle can help you create an easy mirror for some things. Third, there's offset, which when enabled will take the constraints object's original location and take that into consideration. Basically, it will add on top of that the cubes movement, but respecting the original relative position of our monkey. Then there's two transform space selections. Now, again, most of these constraints have this. And if you ask me, don't touch these and just leave them on world space, which in most instances will be just fine. Finally, there's influence. Well, all constraints have this slider and this basically allows you to tweak how much your object is affected by its constraint or by its target. So it's a great way to add a more natural look, especially when it comes to animating with constraints. The copy location constraint is perfect for creating things like sliding doors, where you can easily mirror the movement of one door to the other. The next one on the list is copy rotation, which is very similar to copy location. The only difference being that instead of copying the location, it copies an object's rotation. So whatever target you set this to, it will take the rotation of this target and apply it to your constraint object. It has many of the same options. The axis allows for limiting rotation on a per axis basis. Invert lets you mirror the rotation per axis and influence again lets you set how much your object is affected by its target. Now there's two more options to look at here. Mix and order. Mix lets you set how you wish to use the original movement. Frankly, I only use two of these, replace, which removes any existing rotation on the object and replaces it with the target's rotation and add, which as it sounds, adds the original rotation of your object to the rotation of the target. So this can create some intricate rotational movement only using this constraint in a matter of seconds. The copy rotation constraint is perfect for creating fixed rotational objects such as gear systems. Copy skill is another basic constraint which simply does as you expect. It copies the skill of a target object with again a per axis limit and the ability to control the influence. What's very cool here here, though is the power slider. This will let you multiply the skill change of the target to make your objects be affected more or less depending on what value you use here. It can even convert an object scaling up into an object scaling down when you set it to a negative value. Now you can toggle make uniform to make sure that the scaling is done on all axes and you can toggle offset if you have a secondary skill animation you wish to use as well. 
Copy skill is mostly used in rigging as it is a very convenient way of copying the skill of bones across your rig. Copy transforms is one of my least favorite constraints as I don't find it to be very useful. Again, it does as you expect, it just copies all the transforms of your target object and takes them to your uh, constrained object. Location, rotation and skill. It's similar to parenting an object with control P, I guess. Now, this constraint does have two unique options. You can toggle remove target shear, which in my experience usually doesn't do anything, but feel free to leave a comment if you know what this does and if you find it useful at all. And the other one is the mix type, which will let you control how Blender interprets the targets. Transform forms. However, in most cases, I just prefer using the constraints on a individual basis, so location, rotation and skill individually, as this gives me way more flexibility than using the copy transforms constraint. Copy transforms is another one that's mostly used for rigging. It's especially functional for doing things like facial rigging and motion capture. Besides Blender's constraints, you can also experience actual constraints holding you back in your learning process. Now to help you overcome these constraints, I've partnered up with CG Boost, who more than once have helped me understand things and learn the ins and outs of Blender with one of their amazing courses. I especially like Martin Kleckner's landscape course as it contains so much high quality instructions, hours of content, and it really helped me get those landscape designs up to that Hollywood quality that you want. And besides the courses, you'll also get to be part of an inspiring learning community of over 18,000 active students and the CG Boost team there to help you answer questions when you have them. Now, as I firmly believe these courses will help you get better at Blender, I'm super excited to say that CG Boost has offered to give the first 50 people who go to the link cgboost.com slash kaizen and use code kaizen20 a 20% discount on their purchase. So make sure to check out the link in the description down below and get one of their courses at a amazing discount right now. All right, so let's get back to our constraints here. Limit distance is another very intuitive constraint. As the name states, it limits the distance between the target and the object. Setting the distance value helps determine this distance and lets you have control over the constraint. And again, you can also use the influence slider to further control the effect. A fun way to use the limit distance constraint is to create a solar system. And this way you can make sure the planets never leave their orbit as they rotate around a fixed limited distance around the sun. So I'm assuming you are starting to see a pattern here, right? Most of these are very intuitive and limit rotation is no different as it lets you set the limits or specifically the minimum and maximum rotation of an object on a per axis basis. The order option lets you specify in which order the axes are interpreted by Blender, but I just always leave it on default. Limit rotation, for example, lets you create a door. Pay attention though, there could be some snapping issues. Now, that brings us to limit skill. Again, it's as simple as it sounds. The constraint will let you set a minimum or maximum skill per axis, as well as give you control over how strong the effect is with the influence slider. Limit skill is again perfect for rigging, especially cartoony characters, which have more stretching going on in their limbs. The next one down is one of my favorite constraints and it's called maintain volume and it's perfect for animating things. This constraint is unique in its purpose as it ensures the volume of an object is constant. You can control the volume with the number here and set the axis which shouldn't change in the free axis selection. You can set how strict it is in the mode, but by default it's set to strict, which works well enough. So how does this work then? The maintain volume constraint looks at the default applied skill size, which if you don't change the cube is two times two times two and appoints an arbitrary number of 1m as the volume to this default size. In actuality, this is incorrect as the volume of the cube is actually eight meters cubed, um, but whatever. So if you now increase the volume slider to 2m, you are effectively doubling the total volume of the cube, which means the cube has the skill to account for this increase in volume. It does this on all axes except the one you have selected in the free axes. So when animating, it's important for objects to maintain their volume to make things look as realistic as possible. So look at this example for instance. This is a ball and it bounces and as it does it squishes, stretches and deforms as a result of the forces applied to it. And this is all done because the shape or the volume cannot change. 
Now here's an example of this same principle but then applied to a jumping sphere in a more cartoonish manner. And I really feel that this technique makes objects come alive and please let me know if you agree on that in the comments. Now the last constraint is definitely not the least as it's my favorite one in the list of transform constraints and that's because it's infinitely versatile. The transformation... <laughs> The transformation constraint lets you take your target's transform value and apply or convert it to a certain property of your object. It's basically a map range node for constraints. You can map any range, location, rotation or skill to any other transform. So let's transform this cylinder's location to the monkey's rotation. And to do so we can define the location min and max per axis. So for example I can set the x min to negative 1 and the x max to plus one and then go into map two and select the rotation tab here. In this case, I want to rotate the monkey on the X axis between zero and 180 degrees. So now if I start moving the cylinder from left to right on the X axis in this case, the monkey rotates accordingly. It's so cool and practical as we've effectively mapped a location range from negative one to one to a rotation range of zero to 180. Good to know that if you want the transformation to keep going and basically keep on rotating the monkey, you can enable the extrapolate toggle. Now, if you remove the cylinder, the monkey will just keep on rotating. And in the case that your object already has its own transforms going on, you can set the mix mode to something else to get the desired results. It's important to note that when you want to take the map from range into the map to range and you want to change, for example, the X axis to the Y axis, that you'll have to change the source axis in the map too. So for example, if you want to take the X min and max range and you want to convert that to a Y location, range, you have to change the Y source axis down here into X. So it will take the X map from input and take it into the map to Y. A cool way to use the transformation constraint is to create a draw bridge. In this case, we can convert the rotation of our handle here to the rotation of the actual bridge part. So now you know how to unlock the incredibly useful powers of constraints in Blender. But do you actually have stuff to apply them to? So how about you check out this video and get working on those modeling skills next. Thanks a ton to the following patrons for supporting the channel.